In this example problem, we're going to look at another methodology, another variant to spread out joint revenues to their component products. And it is called the Shapley method. And the Shapley method is very similar to the incremental method. But the incremental method assumes that everybody feels a certain way. Like they see a bundle of different products and they say that one product in the bundle is the real reason that I'm buying that. And in real practice, that might not be the case. There's definitely situations that you can have where a certain portion of people view one component product as the prime driver for the reason they're buying the bundle, while another group of people consider another product to be the reason they're buying the bundle. Uh, that's the case over here with the Overlook Hotel. The Overlook Hotel has a world-class Irish cuisine restaurant in its lobby called Delbert Grady's. The Overlook has started offering an overnighter package where guests can book a room at the Overlook and get dinner for two at Delbert Grady's. If they buy just the hotel suite. It's 175 bucks a night. If they go to get dinner without staying in the hotel, dinner for two will cost 125 bucks. So if they had to buy both of these standalone, they'd have to pay $300 in total, 175 plus 125. However, if they purchase the overnighter package, they only have to pay 240. They save themselves $60. Well, some people in this instance might be like, we're going to go stay at the hotel so we might as well get dinner as well and then another subset of people could be like well we're going to go out for dinner we're probably going to have a few drinks while we're there we should probably get a hotel suite as well so there's different you know markets for the component products that go within this bundle the shapely method is not is going to assume that not everybody is coming because of the hotel suite or not everybody is coming for dinner but a certain portion of people view the suite as the primary reason they're buying the package and a certain portion of people perceive the dinner to be the reason that they're buying the package. So how do we do this? Well, firstly, we need to figure out how we would allocate revenues to each component product using the incremental method if we knew that everybody wanted one thing or the other. And we'll start with the hotel being the primary product that we have here. How would we do this? Well, we would allocate, since this is the driver in this instance, would allocate revenue up to the standalone price to the hotel first. So that would be the 175 bucks. What would that leave remaining to go to the restaurant? Well, the package costs 240. 175 already went to the hotel, so we only have $65 left. That is less than the standalone price of the restaurant of dinner for two. And since we don't have enough to allocate standalone price, which you always will in this instance, we allocate what we can, which is the remaining 65 bucks and therefore we've allocated out the full amount of the revenue because there is zero remaining. What about the people that see this the other way around? They're coming to the restaurant and decide, well, we might as well stay at the hotel as well because we're getting a deal on it. Well, you would allocate revenues equal to standalone to the primary product, in this case, the restaurant. So you would give the restaurant the full 125 bucks. The bundle costs 240. If you give 125 bucks, the standalone price to the restaurant, that leaves only 115 left. So that's all we can allocate to the hotel. Yes, it's less than the $175 standalone price, but that's all we have left out of the joint revenues that the sale of an overnighter package are going to generate. So that's our two different setups over here. That is how it looks when the hotel is considered to be the primary product. 175 bucks in revenue would go to the hotel, the remaining 65 of the restaurant. This is how it looks when the restaurant is the primary product. The full 125 would go to the restaurant, the remaining 115 would go to the hotel. Well, with Shapely, we got to figure out what portion of people view the hotel as the main reason and what portion of people view the restaurant as the main reason. And in this first example, we have it with equal demand, which means it's a 50-50 split. Well, we just have to find the average of the two different ways that we can allocate out revenues. If the hotel was the primary product, it would be allocated $175 worth of revenues. When it's the incremental product, the secondary product, if you will, it only gets 115. We got to find the average of those two numbers. So what do we do? We add them together and we divide that by a big fat two. And the midpoint 
of those two numbers is 145 bucks. So that's the average of these two, and we want the average because demand is equal on each side. What about for the restaurant down here? Well, and that's the primary product. The restaurant gets 125 bucks. When the restaurant is viewed as the incremental product, the secondary product, it only gets $65. So let's find the average of those two. Again, equal demand. It's $190 in total revenues. We have to split out for every two overnighters that are sold, which means that on average, each overnighter package should have $95 worth of revenues allocated to it for the restaurant. Uh, and that's the mid ground between the two. The restaurant, or the hotel, excuse me, is in the middle of 175 and 125. The Hotel is in the middle of the 170, no, sorry. The hotel is in the middle of the 175 and the 115. The restaurant is in the middle of the 125 and 65. So this is a fair way to put it out. Not everybody's coming for one product or the other. That example assumes here that's a 50-50 split, which is probably something you're not going to see in real life. Most times there is one part of the product that is going to be the obvious driver. So what if we polled people? What if we went out and said, what's the real reason that you're buying this overnighter package? And three out of every four people that we polled said it's the hotel. Well, we can't split 50-50 then because 50% of the demand is not being driven by the hotel. Three out of every four means that 75% of the demand is being driven by the hotel. So what do we do? Well, let's look at this like a bundle of every four sales. For every four overnighter packages that we sell, three of those people are going to consider the hotel to be the primary reason that they're buying this product. Well, when the hotel is the primary reason, it's $175 allocated to it, and three out of every four would say that. So those three people would cause $525 to be allocated to the hotel. The fourth party here, the one out of every four, if you will, considers it to be the incremental product. And when the hotel is the incremental product, it gets $115 added to it. So 115 times one gives us 115 bucks. If I add those two together, I come up with $640 worth of revenue. So for every four overnighters that we sell, assuming that three people view it as the hotel as the primary product and one views it as the incremental product, the hotel would have $640 of revenue allocated to it. Well, how much is that on average for each overnighter? Let's just divide it by the bundle size, if you will, the, the size of our sample that we are pulling. And 640 divided by four is 160. So under this methodology, we say that the majority of people that are buying this package, assume the hotel is the reason that they're going to buy the overnighter package. And we should give it the majority of the joint revenues and we would allocate 160 bucks to the hotel for each overnighter package that's sold what about the restaurant well with the restaurant again if every, three out of every four people are saying the hotel is the reason that they're coming only one out of every four are saying the restaurant is the reason they're coming so if we allocate 125 dollars to the restaurant but only one out of every four says that the sale of four overnighters is only going to have one person who believes that the restaurant is the primary reason we're only going to allocate revenues for the primary product of the restaurant for one person the other three would say it's the incremental product and when it's the incremental product when we did our incremental method above we only allocated 65 dollars for the revenues so if we multiply that by three because the other three people would be viewing it as the incremental or secondary product that means out of every four overnighters that we sell three would have it as the secondary product we would allocate 65 bucks each time somebody said it was the secondary product that'd be 195 dollars in total and if i add those two together one person saying it's the primary product and three people saying it's the secondary product would cause us to allocate a total of 320 dollars to the restaurant for the sale of every four overnight packages so on average if we take that 320 for every four and divide it by four it means on average every time somebody buys an overnight package we should be assigning a hundred or assigning eighty dollars worth of revenues to the restaurant 
and the 160 and the 180 totals up to 240. So that would be allocating out the full joint price of the overnighter package. 145 and 95 adds up to 240. We'd be allocating out the full joint amount here. So with the Shapely method, you get a fair representation, but you need more information than the other methods. You need to have a reasonable pull of your customers to figure out what really is their determinant for demand. And that's not something that comes across easily. Like you can't go to every customer that comes in and says, are you coming for the hotel or are you coming for the restaurant? You would take a sample, you would take a poll, and then that would be your percentage.